the decisions we took in the early part of the last year to prepare ourselves, get ourselves an advanced state of readiness for when it did come, because we believed that it would happen. We walked the talk. As a result of that, we got a lot of aircraft flying completely full, uh, with very high yields, even notwithstanding the fuel costs as they are, and we're making, actually, good money. Now, that is uh, a task that I set myself personally, to see the business back into, into a sort of fighting uh, capability again. The, the cash on the balance sheet has been restored to pre-COVID levels now. And we're very, very confident, unless there's something else that comes up, that we will take the business through to the end of the finance year in very good shape. As we look at the return to service and the recovery that's underway, the difficulties across the board, <clears throat> uh, where are you finding pinch points? Where are you finding difficulties? Uh, primarily in the countries within the European theatre with the supply chain problems, labour supply problems, airports not uh, getting themselves up to a state of readiness, which they've, I think that they've had ample opportunity to do, but there we are. The reality is that we can't operate. In fact, some of the places, uh, such as Heathrow yesterday, told us to cut back our frequencies by 10%, uh, giving us 24 hours notice to cancel uh, flights that were already full. Um, Are you going to do that? And if so, well, we, we really don't have much choice because otherwise you're going to get a continuation of what you've already seen with regard to the way they handle baggage and everything else. Uh, it's not just peculiar to Heathrow. There have been other places where it's been difficult but not impossible. Um, and we ha are working around all of those things. In the Middle East, in Dubai, we don't have those problems. We opened all our five terminals by October of last year and they're up and running. You still haven't parked quite a lot of planes, don't you? Mm -hmm. When do you hope to bring them back in? Um, probably by the back end of this year, the first few months calendar next year. I mean, is there a difficulty bringing them back in? Crewing. In crewing. I was like, are you having crewing? Well, no, look, we, the, the most important thing here is that we, we, it's not a question of getting the people in back into the company. It's a question of overstressing uh, the training facilities, which, which we're not prepared to do. Otherwise, we'll never get the pilot, pilots back to the gold standard. So there's only a certain number of pilots you can put through our training facilities in a month. If we push it, it's about 50. We're actually getting about 30 through, so we, which involves quite a lot of uh, using 380s as training vehicles as well as the simulators. But we won't compromise on that. I guess whatever problems that one faces now, it pales compared to the problems two years ago. I mean, everything has to be seen in perspective. Of two yeah. years ago, when the whole thing just ground to a halt. Yes. And I, look, of all the, the, the disruptors that I've seen in my career, this is probably takes the ticket. Now, this, is, this was pushing 10 on the Richter scale. And so now we've got the aftershocks coming through, the tremors, etc. But, you know, when they find the world crashed in 2008, 2009, we all thought this was the end well, we bounce back out of that, um, and uh, for many reasons. So what's going to happen here? Do I look forward to uh, a kind of resurgence of demand? We've seen that one. We said that would happen. I think I said it to you last year, the bow wave, as I've called it. It's, a lot of people were misbelievers or disbelievers, I should say, in that, and now they're getting caught as a result. The, Dow, the bow wave will dissipate, but at what pace? So what, what is going to be the first thing that's going to drag us down? Is it the difficulties in the global economy? Or will they resolve themselves by the time the bow wave dissipates? I don't know. My own view is that we're good to go both, both top and bottom, i.e. above the wing, below the wing, until the end of next year, beginning of 25. And that's a bold move to say, but that's wow. what I think we are. 25. Mm -hmm. By which time, hopefully, the economy's turned around. Well, we, there's always that. And, you know, I've seen it happen many times before. Um, and I've, whichever the, 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 the nature of the disruption is, but it generally gets itself back into good condition. Now, the only caveat to that is the Ukrainian situation. Right.